I think he's got it. Come on. There we go. Fish on. There we go. Oh, it's a nice one. There you go. Nice. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have traveled one hour away from my home. We're about 60 miles out. Uh, we're almost to the Delaware, Maryland state border. There are three counties in Delaware, Newcastle County, that's the top of the state, Kent County, the middle of the state, that's where I'm from, and then Sussex County, that's down where we're at right now. We are going to be doing a lot of exploratory fishing. We're going to be doing freshwater fishing. Normally, anytime that I'm in Sussex County, it's always a bay or ocean fishing. But I've never really gone all out and tried to decide to come down south to go ahead and try to see what kind of fish are down here. I always stay in my bubble in Kent County. And every once in a while, maybe I go up into Newcastle County. But like this pond right here, we're going to visit this one and many others today to try to get some fish on the end of the line. The one bait we're going to be using right now to try to get fish on and see what sizes are in these ponds is going to be the wacky worm. Guys, that's the wacky rig we're going to put it up on. And we're just going to jig around and try to get some bites on the end of the line. But we picked one specific make of bait uh, to use because the main focus right now is the rate of fall on this bait. Um, obviously, I did a little bit of research here with my Google Maps search to try to find some of these ponds that are around here in the southern part of Delaware. But I also checked on YouTube to see which ones, which baits that is, has the great rate of fall. Because not all wacky worms are the same. Some are thicker than others. Some are lighter than others. Some are denser than others. Some are not. Some float at the top, take their sweet time to get down to the bottom. Some just drop right straight down because of their weight. But then there's baits that are right in the middle. They have a great rate of fall. And those are the ones you want right there that are fluttering down just at the right rate where that fish is looking long enough in order to decide, do I want to execute, swoop up, gobble up, and eat that wacky worm? That's the worm we want right now. So, of course, I found one bait that stood out among most. Uh, I always use Strike King, Guggen baits. Yum. Those are my mainstays when it comes to the wacky worms. However, the one that jumped out at me when I saw a couple episodes on some uh, channels is six cents guys this is the clout this one seems to have the best rate of fall in the water weightless that is not with a weight on it so that's what we're going to go for is the weightless uh, effect right now because uh, it was very very windy yesterday i was going to try this episode out but it was well over 20 mile an hour gusts today is much better so hopefully we have some success getting that bait out there i'm hoping through all of our trekking and driving today, we get a big old bass on the end of the line. So stick with me, let's hook it up. Let's start casting around and see if we can get that big old hit. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, we are using a Sixth Sense fishing product. Again, the clout is the name of the uh, wacky worm that we're using right now. It's 5.4 inches, comes in a 10 count, and the two colors we're gonna be using right now is the one in front of you, dark melon red, and the other one's gonna be black blue flake. All right, let's get the wacky rig going on. I'm going to try to cast along the sides right here as best as I can. Try to get across that way. And, of course, the further we go away, the further the distance is. So uh, we're pretty much stuck to this one shoreline right here. But hopefully we can find a couple little critters swimming around in this uh, locale. I'm going to try to do my darndest to try to get these uh, baits up onto the trees that are hanging over or some laydowns that are in the water maybe if we find them along the way. But definitely I'm looking here and you can see the nice rate of fall that this thing has. Very, very nice. Got to go ahead and fix my uh, line here. Too fast. Boom. Perfect. Right on the shoreline. Of course, a mallard wants to land there right where I want to fish at. <laughs> Great job, Mr. Duck. Hmm, what spooked him? Bass might have bit him on the foot. <laughs> couple things you want to look out for when you're fishing with a worm right here is watch your line because uh, sometimes you may not even feel that fish touching your line however you'll see that quick jerk of the line or the line just straightening out or going to your left or to your right sometimes you do feel the fish on the end of the line depending how big or how aggressive that fish is Now 
not even get one nibble yet, man. What the heck? All right, this water is a little cloudy right now, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and switch off to the black blue flake and see if that makes a little bit of a difference because if you can notice, the bait kind of matches the water that's going on right now, so that might be my problem. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, change that over. While we're going through our progressions here, I will let you know that yesterday we did have a pretty good front come through. Uh, it was a pretty good storm. So we got some uh, rain that came down on us and as well, we have a little bit of a temperature drop. It may possibly hit 70 degrees today, but uh, literally two days ago, it was almost 90 degrees uh, in uh, April. But let's walk along the shoreline here to keep moving. I think we got our first bite here. Maybe. That or it's a bluegill teasing us. <laughs> Fish on. There you go. There we go. All right, we got a jumper going on. <laughs> That's a nice one. It took us a while to get to him, but he engulfed that worm. <laughs> oh! Quick release. <laughs> All right. He literally had that in his gullet. You can notice that the uh, weedless part is not exposed at all. So he sucked this thing down into his throat. But we'll take that, that fish touched land. I was gonna say, I didn't travel one hour down the way to have the first pond yield nothing at all. <laughs> that was a very, very light tick on that line. I had to look for it and watch the line go to the left. Skunk is off. Whole bunch of minnows scattering around here. You know what bass has got to be in here somewhere. Fish is biting on. Oh, <laughs> we got snapped off, I think. Yep, we sure did. <laughs> Snagged the uh, whole worm right off of there. Let's get another uh, black blue flake clout on there. I saw that fish swoop on the bait right over. Oh my goodness gracious. He flashed up right over there. Hopefully you guys saw that. <laughs> I was trying to throw in that little tiny cove right there. Let's give it a couple seconds to see if that fish will go back in there. But we'll cast over beyond over there. Give him a chance to recover. But they're catching the end of the bait. They're not swallowing it. Oh, I think he's got it. Come on. There we go, fish on. There we go, oh, it's a nice one. There you go. Nice. All right. Good, decent bass. All right. <laughs> right in that cove right there. That's what flashed up against us on this bait. He swallowed it up pretty good. I know. The bait's got thrown, but if you look down his throat right there, that's where the uh, wacky rig hook is at. That's a stocky little guy. <laughs> I'm going to give that guy a pound and a half. But nice, nice looking bass. Get another look-see on the bass right here. Uh, don't mind the blood. Again, we just hit a capillary in the tongue right there, but she's perfectly fine. But we'll get this bass on the way. And she's gone. Boom. <laughs> I 
was playing with that one for a little while. You saw me playing with the uh, bluegills right along this edge, but when I was popping in close right into this little cove, I had that one little flash come up and I missed a fish. However, I flipped over there one more time right next to that lay down. It's sitting in the water, that bush right there, and a couple jigs, and we had that fish bang up on the end of the line right there. Two on. We're definitely going to have to retie because I can feel some abrasions on here. So give me a couple seconds. We'll get that done and get back in the water here with the bait. Caught those couple fish. As always, I'm always feeling the line, feeling for those abrasions, those nicks, those cuts. Anything could be doing that. I mean, something as simple as this blade right here on this plant right here can cut through it. You got branches right here. You got logs that are underneath the water. Even the fish uh, that you scrape up against to their top of their mouths and everything else cause all kinds of uh, abrasions on the line and any point in time it could snap. So just make sure you're checking it and make sure you retie as many times as you feel like you need to so you don't lose that bite also a common mistake here is a lot of people cut right where the line is at and they think everything's okay make sure you ride your fingers up the line because you're going to be at least going the distance of from the bottom of the body of the fish to the top of the head because any part of that can rub across them and cause abrasions way higher than where you tied the knot so i'm looking right here i got about at least maybe a foot that I gotta cut off right here because I'm feeling those nicks that are in the line. As we're moving along right here, a little small FYI, if you've never fished with plastics before or you don't do it too often, and you got these wacky rig hooks and you're out there just doing your thing, just jigging it around, one thing you don't want to do, you'll feel the ticky tacks on the bluegills, you'll know exactly what they are, and um, they'll pick it up real quick and then run with it for a split second, drop it. But the bass kind of pick it up and then drop it, and then when they do, sometimes they'll pick it up in their mouth and then they move with it, left or right or outwards. As soon as you see that movement, impart the action and strike the fish, because you don't want that fish to ride with that bait in any direction for too long, because eventually what's going to happen is when that fish is swimming away, they're swallowing the length of that worm in their gullet and as well this hook coming towards there too as well and you don't want this in their gullet it's going to cause problems with the fish and you don't want to kill it obviously uh, we got lucky and we hooked that one right into the tongue because I did wait a tad a little too long to get that bite going on but ideally you want to get that up into their crusher plates top or bottom uh, never in the side but you know if it happens it happens but that's generally the idea where you want to strike these fish and catch them uh, hook wise so just to give you some information there. We're starting off a little bit slow. I'm not surprised again with that front that came through yesterday here, but we got two fish on the end of the line. That one cool catch was about halfway down the end here, but this is a decent little place. I might come back here again. It's nice and quiet and relaxed, but uh, our game right now is to continue our adventure and jump onto some other bodies of water and try to get some more fish on the end of the line. So let me get in the car. Let's go ahead and jump out to our next spot. We are on our next body of water right here. I've literally skimmed the whole bottom part of Delaware. It's basically a straight line. Just had a carp jump right up over here. We're hundreds of yards away from the Atlantic Ocean right here. This is actually a freshwater pond, believe it or not. I've been here a long time ago. I really thought this episode was going to be pretty easy to do. Uh, like I said, I've been going across the bottom of Delaware, and I thought I was going to find a whole bunch of ponds that we might have access to. But absolutely not. I mean, the closer you get down to the seashore, the tighter uh, it is to get into these ponds because most of these ponds are surrounded by homes and there are signs all over the place. If you're not the owner, you can't fish. <laughs> it's pretty much what it's been saying. So uh, this one right here, we've got some shoreline to work with here. We're going to probably work right along here, go around the corner. There's a bridge we can work upon and, and so hopefully we can get on some of those docks that are along the way here. But I'm trying to get another bass on, guys. Uh, I'm fiending right now because I've been on the road for at least, I'm not exaggerating, at least two hours. <laughs> so let's see if we can try to get another bite going on. Oop, there's a bite right there. Fish on. There you go. Nice little dink. Oh, he just came off. <laughs> uh, it's a long time between bites. You saw him skimming across the top of the water there, though. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this bulkhead just right over here real quick. Give this town another month, and it's going to be jumping all kinds of traffic. Right now, there's just nobody here. Oh, 
something just bit me off the pipe there you go oh my god he just broke off there was a fish right there in the pipe guys <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> that was a decent sized one too let's make our way across the bridge Unfortunately, I had to relent and put a weight on uh, our clout here with the wacky rig we've got going in front of you here. Uh, the wind's blowing so much that it's actually bringing the bait up to the top of the surface of the water, and that's not what we want. <laughs> so we got to get it down to where the fish are at. Should make things a little bit more easier casting-wise as well, too. We've only got two fish on the end of the line, uh, even... Though we got the most easiest bait to use right here, sometimes you don't get bass on as many as you think you will. But uh, I'm having a tough time catching fish out here today. <laughs> Let's see if we can try to get up under a couple of these docks. Fish on. There you go. There's a fish right there. Nice. All right. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I saw my line straightening out. <laughs> this one's got some crazy lips, Senor Fish. <laughs> Another one on the tongue right here. So we're going to go ahead and get the uh, pliers out here. Pull it out there gingerly. Hopefully it's not going to be a bleeder like the last one. But first cast under a dock. That literally took just about two and a half hours to get that fish. It does have some unique markings on it. I'll show you that in a second. But we got that out of there. Markings on the uh, tail right there. And there's some on the side as well. But again, you can see what happens when you touch that tongue. It just bleeds like crazy, but she's gone. I'm surprised I've been able to keep this uh, wacky rig hook. Usually I use like two or three of them because they get caught up on things, but uh, it's been doing pretty well. And you can see the color of choice right now is black blue. Ooh. It's like a fish possibly. Something's nibbling on it. There you go, fish on. Oh, he came off. <laughs> Sitting right along the edge there. He was playing around with it. Fish on. There you go, fish on. That's a decent one. That's a decent one, guys. Nice. Real good one. Real good one. Oh, yes. That pays it off for the day, guys. There you go. There's a chunk. <laughs> there is a chunk right there. Clearly betting. You can see the red tail again. But you can kind of see right here, as I'm telling you, See how they kind of swallow that worm down in there? That's not how far you want that worm to get down there. But we're going to try to figure out where the hook is at and get it out of there. We have to sacrifice it because I need to know where the hook is at. It's right at his gullet. Look at the red tail, guys. I mean, it is solid red there in the base. But let's get that fish in the water. And off she goes. She's gone. Got a tiny bit of light left. Can we get a big one? A couple more docks. Here we go. We finally lost our first hook of the day. I got caught on the corner of that dock up there. We're going to try to tie one more and finish out the last leg of this uh, uh, pond right here. Something swam off over there. Fish on. There you go. 
All right, little one. Oh, that's a crappy. Holy mess, look at the size of that crappy. Oh my God, that is a giant crappy. Wow. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Holy crap. Beautiful, way bigger than my hand, obviously. Whoa, almost fell down here, <laughs> just from the pure excitement. But uh, let's get that out of there. I'm totally surprised on that catch. But one more look at this pretty little crappy. <laughs> That's a nice little bonus today. And off she goes. I'm not gonna lie, this was a very hard episode to film. I put a whole lot of miles on the car, a whole lot of hours of fishing, and I was only able to get onto two ponds that I had access to because most of these ponds right down on the bottom of Delaware here, seashore towns uh seashore communities they're all locked down they got houses all the way around the ponds and signs everywhere telling you to stay the heck out but i think we did fairly decent uh based on the conditions we were dealing with uh you can't get them all the time guys on a wacky worm i mean you think that's the easiest bait to put fish on the end of the line and you saw what happened right there i mean i got maybe what four or five bass and that crazy crappy right down in the corner over there man that was the bonus at the end that almost pounder that's i'm pretty sure it was close to it but my coolest catch was that second fish of the day where i flipped into that tiny little cove and the fish kind of rolled up on the bait and missed it but then when i flipped back in there again man she walloped on that bait and it was a really nice looking stocky bass like i said it's going to be a bruiser when it grows up and uh, i caught a couple good ones off of these docks that are right over here I'm hoping you guys enjoyed that episode as many hours that I put in here today. If you did, guys, give me that thumbs up. I would hope you subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell to be informed of all of our future episodes. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about it. Enjoy this light a little bit right here. You can follow us on Instagram at 302fishing. I'm hoping you have a great day, and I hope to get to see you on the next episode.